Recently, New York City hosted the first ever internationally recognized car race in the city, which is crazy just kind of on its own, but it was also historic for another reason. It was the first ever all electric car race in the city as well. Qualcomm, the technology partner for the event, was kind enough to invite me to the race being held here in Brooklyn to get a behind the scenes look at this relatively new motorsport. I actually found it super fascinating, and of course, I brought a camera. So I asked you guys on YouTube if you wanted me to do a quick video on the event and got a resounding yes. So, here we go. First up, real quick, let's talk about the series as a whole. This year, the series consisted of 12 races in nine different countries around the world. There were 10 teams and each team has two drivers. There's one race, or e pre as it's called, per day. And during that race, the top 10 drivers are each given points based on this system here. In addition to these points, three points is given to the person who gets the pole position during the qualifying lap before each race, which is essentially uh, a race where everybody goes around the track one time to do the fastest flying lap. This also determines where they sit on the starting grid. Then there is one point given to whoever does the fastest lap during the actual e pre race. At the end of the series, the championship is made up of each driver's score, and then there is a team score that is comprised of the two drivers on that team added together. And that's basically the entire gist of the scoring system. Simple, easy to follow, I like it. Which then brings us to the cars and the race itself. The cars can go from zero to 60 in about 2.9 seconds with a top speed of 140 miles an hour, and they get there a lot quieter than their Formula One brethren. They have instant torque thanks to those electric motors, and that's also, of course, the reason why they make a lot less sound. Unlike Formula One, you can actually be right next to the track without the need of earplugs, and in fact, you can even have a conversation with somebody next to the track without having to raise your voice too much, which is, is kind of nice. Now, that's not to say that they don't make any sound, which I actually think would be super awkward, frankly. The sound that they do make is actually like a high-pitched whine. In fact, it kind of reminds me, and I don't know if you've ever seen these, but those track cars that you used to play with as a kid that had the little trigger remotes as they went around on the track over and over again. And I don't mean that in a bad way. To me, it sort of resembles what electricity might sound like if it were actually audible, if that makes any sense. And it's definitely still exciting every time the cars go by too. So now a little bit more about how the event itself goes down. Before the race, drivers are given two practice laps, one for 45 minutes followed by one for 30 minutes before they do the actual e pre race for the day. During the race, the drivers have to be mindful of their batteries. Think like Formula One and how they have to be mindful of their use of gas, right? Same thing. So they can either be more aggressive and probably have to pit a little earlier or they can conserve their power and pit a little bit later. Either way, there is one mandatory pit about halfway through the race simply because the batteries end up dying and they end up having to swap cars. Now you might be wondering, why don't they just charge the cars or maybe swap out the batteries? Well, it turns out that charging the cars would take a decent amount of time and make the race a lot longer and that's kind of boring. Uh, and then the swapping of the batteries is actually for safety reasons, I was told. It's just super high powered batteries and to be able to swap those out super quickly in a big rush, probably not the safest thing to do. Once they do swap cars though, they then head back out on the track to finish the last half of the race. The race I attended itself, the e pre was about an hour and a half long in total. By the way, when they do end up charging the batteries, they do it in a little bit different of a way than saying having your normal generator sitting there and powering and using gas. They use glycerin generators. Glycerin is actually a byproduct from producing biodiesel, uh, and it burns a lot cleaner than diesel and any other form of gas. So it just kind of goes to sort of illustrate the lengths these guys are trying to go to to make this just a much cleaner sport. Now besides the glycerin generators and the fact that it's a kind of fun sport to watch, at least I think so when I attended, uh, there's a lot more going on behind this motorsport that I think is important. In the same way that car manufacturers develop all this crazy technology for Formula One that eventually slowly makes its way into production cars, Formula E can do the same thing for the much more fledgling and much more needing, frankly, electric car industry. From those glycerin generators that are a huge push 
towards ending the criticisms about how electric vehicles still require a lot of gasoline and all this other fossil fuels and carbon costs are not necessarily offset by those cars, which is not entirely inaccurate normally, um, to things like the fact that the race organization themselves partner with DHL to try to figure out how they can transport things and piggyback off of the already existing transportation that's happening. Like things are already going to the country that they're uh, having a race in, so they just piggyback on that all to try to minimize the footprint. To the fact that Qualcomm themselves have even within the uh, span of this race being around has managed to get their wireless charging that they use on a lot of these cars. The output power, they've managed to double already, all while making the actual pad that goes on the car much smaller. And of course, that's not even including all of the tech that each manufacturer has actually put into the cars to make the electric motors a lot more faster and just more efficient. Listening to the panel that was happening the night before the race, they even mentioned that they have tech already that they can actually wirelessly charge the cars during the race. Now, not at full speed yet, but at a decent speed, they said. Uh, the crazier part of this is that they also mentioned that technically speaking, they could keep those cars charged at the same level. So in other words, they won't lose any charge while using that track wirelessly charging, which means they could technically run indefinitely, which sort of blows my mind. Add to that that during that same panel discussion, they did mention that they actually have a few cities that are very interested in allowing them to actually tear up the asphalt in that city and put in the wireless charging in there so that they can then use that for the race. The coolest part about that though is that then when the race is done and they leave, the city then has that infrastructure to then use for their own public transportation, which of course they might not be able to do without the race's help. Now, even though this was a really fun event to attend and it was pretty fascinating, the thing that fascinates me a little bit more is the idea that the more you look at this motorsport, the more you realize that maybe, just maybe, it can actually produce some real positive change in the world. Crazy. There you go, guys. e -pre and Formula E. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about this in the comments below about the race itself, about me doing videos like this. Curious what you guys think. Always love to hear from you, so let me know. Uh, otherwise, though, if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want more videos like this, please check out my channel. And if you like what you see there, please subscribe. Also, if you are subscribed or you're about to subscribe, please also remember to click the bell next to the word subscribe in order to turn on notifications so that you actually get notified when I do new videos. I don't do them very often. I want to know you, I promise. Uh, but that way you'll at least see them, and I would really appreciate that. As always, though, thanks for watching.